Good morning once again. Welcome for welcome with Breakfast for Deacons. I am Deacon Derek Walcott. And today my guest is Hannah McSween, this young lady, and we're focusing today on young people and the positive things that young people are doing in Trinidad and Tobago. Young Trinidad and Tobagonians who are doing incredible things. And I have Hannah with me. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning. Good morning to everybody outside there watching, watching this the number one breakfast show in the morning where you only get good news and today we're going to focus on good news because I'm, i want to introduce hannah hannah you're a young lady you're one of my neighbors you live right around the corner from me um you when i was you know when i was talking to your mom by the way i had her mom on last week last week tuesday and i said but wait now Hannah is doing such incredible things. I want to bring Hannah on Breakfast with Deacons because it's all about good news and what this young lady is doing is good news. By the way, she was a, a footballer, eh? <laughs> and we're going to talk about football in a little while because you know Trinidad and Tobago is under 20 squad. Um, we came second in the CFU competition for under 20s, which means we then qualify for the CONCACAF group for the finals in the CONCACAF group. And of course, if we win there or we come in the top two or three, I think, we go to the World Cup. So this is tremendous for Trinidad and Tobago. We lost one nil to the Jamaicans, but it was in their backyard. But that's all right. When we meet up again in the finals, in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the Caribbean finals, no, sorry, in the CONCACAF finals, it's blood and sand. <laughs> Hannah, good morning. Good morning again. Now, Hannah is what we will call a, a development services worker. Hannah, what is a development services worker? A developmental services worker is basically a person who is trained all around to deal with persons with disabilities, developmental disabilities okay. in particular. Mm -hmm. So we can help them develop life skills to do things independently on their own, use the bathroom, bathe themselves, make a sandwich, travel to different places, sometimes even go to work on their own, mm -hmm. prepare them for the job itself. Um, so we are that person that helps them take that first step towards independency as well as to continue it if they need that extra push here and then. Now, you know, you'd find most, most young people going into all different kinds of professions. Mm -hmm. um, how does a footballer <laughs> get involved in helping, and I love what you use, Hannah used the word, persons with development, development dis disabilities, disabilities mm -hmm. right? While other people would use different terms, you put the person first. Right. How did you get involved in this? I mean, just, just give me part of your life story. Today we are dealing with young people doing positive things. Mm -hmm. How did, how, from, from a footballer, <laughs> by the way, where did you go to school? I went Holy Name Convent. Holy Name Convent, yes. What, what, what school did your mother go to? St. Joseph's Convent. By the way, my wife went to Holy Name Convent. I was thrown out of Holy Name and St. Joseph Convent, by the way. But that's another story. So you went to Holy Name Convent. Yes. You, you played football then? Yes, I did. <laughs> what part of the football field do you play in? I mean, what's your specialty? I'm a goalkeeper. Goalkeeper? <laughs> this young lady is a goalkeeper. And, and, and in terms of your football, tell us. Tell us about football, who you played for and that kind of Football is my big thing, yeah? I played for, initially I played for Harvard's football club. Right. And I gave my goalkeeping coach extra <laughs> trouble <laughs> yeah. he thought i was the laziest football ever but i was i was making sure that i, I followed his instructions yeah. when i was ready um then i went to sky football club right while i was at sky football club i played for holy name yeah. for maple leaf when i went there for a year yeah. i trained with the national team hey, hey, we're <laughs> sitting hello we're sitting here with a, a, a celebrity <laughs> she trained with the national football team eh? I mean, a lot of us don't even make it that high, but go ahead. <laughs> and I trained with UE at right. some point, right. but then I yeah. stopped for a little while. Yeah. And I'm still willing to go back to Central FC and train with them. Central FC? Why Central FC? Uh, I mean, I mean that, that's in Central. You, you, child, you're from the North. You don't <laughs> have any good football teams in the North? They do. But I'm choosing Central FC because, right. well, one, I met up with um, Brent Sancho, actually. Wonderful I went person. to, um, yeah. there was an event that they had um, 
specifically for women, actually, mm -hmm. where the male footballers catered mm -hmm. to the women. Yeah. All the women that attended this event, they gave yeah. them their food, they gave them roses to the front, they walked wow. them to them seats, they walked them to the um, from their cars to yeah. the inside. And I found this was this has to be the most amazing thing ever because I've never seen any other football club do something mm -hmm. like this. So they respected women, they yes. showed appreciation and yes. stuff like that. Yes, yes. Central FC, I don't normally promote specific football sides, but because my nephew also is involved in Central FC, this young man, which I'm going to be interviewing, you know, on another show where we're dealing with youth in action and the positive things, he qualified as a geologist. And now he's working with Central FC. I mean, helping them in, in, in their management team. Crazy. But yes, he also had that same kind of positive vibrations coming out. Mm -hmm. Brent Sancho is doing something positive extremely positive and they also won the first trophy and this is a team that just you know just they started, just, just started. <laughs> mm -hmm. and they won their first trophy they beat defense force i believe one nil in the finals of yes. that trophy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they're doing wonderful things but let, let's forget central fc a little bit more about hannah well and the football and then what happened and then you stopped. What, what, but you're going to go back. I'm going to go back. I need to go back. Uh, I'm missing yeah, it a lot. You're missing it a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you're yeah. still young. You're still very, very young. Okay. So, Hannah in football, what kind of uh, drew you to this field? What were you studying? I mean, initially, t t just tell us your whole kind of path. Well, I initially wanted to become a physiotherapist. Okay. Um, while wanting to become a physiotherapist, there mm -hmm. were some things that took place within Trinidad, within the sporting arena, mm -hmm. that made me want to draw more towards being a sports psychologist because okay. I've always wanted to help other people, okay. whether it was persons with disabilities or yeah. typical persons. Right. I just wanted to help. Mm -hmm. So aside from being a physiotherapist, I realized in the sporting arena, we may have also needed a sports psychologist. Okay. So I applied to become a sports psychologist while still doing football, mm -hmm. got a partial skull mm -hmm. at Barry University, mm -hmm. and then I didn't go. And you, you didn't go? No. You just, uh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, no, you know, going to be a sports psychologist, yeah. you got a partial scholarship from Barry, and then you said, I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> and what, what changed your mind? What did you do that influenced you to work with person? with well, development challenges. While I decided not to go to Barry University, I got an opportunity to take an interview to go and work at Immortal Children's Centre. Okay, okay. Um, but my mom, she knows the person who is the head there, and yeah. she was like, well, you know, there's an opportunity there. It's all up to you. And I mm -hmm. said, okay, I'll go to the interview. Mm -hmm. Went to the interview, and within my first term, I just got this connection with these kids. Yeah. They made me laugh every single day there was right. never a dull moment right. with those children and once i realized there was that connection i started doing a lot of research about how mm -hmm. i can help them one-on-one -on -one, individually yes. how yeah. is there a, a training program mm -hmm. that i can get whether it's a diploma or a degree mm -hmm. that i can connect with them in a different way and help them improve their quality of life okay hence my studies which was developmental services worker okay so that helped me. I got the training mm -hmm. to do with them one-on-one, -on -one, whether in school, at home, residential setting, anything. Mm -hmm. And it was more like an all-around thing. And I was pinpoint at Humber, University, um, Humber College. Humber it, College. And where is Humber College? In Canada. In Canada. And so you went away to Humber College in Canada. Mm -hmm. You graduated and you came back to Trinidad. Yes. Normally people would, after they stay. graduate, they would stay. But you wanted to come back home yes. to work with persons young people who would it have... Could be it any could be age, any actually. age group? Yeah, any age. I didn't mind. <laughs> and tell me, where are you working right now? Because you mentioned that you, what touched you is when you worked for Immortel. Mm -hmm. You went and you spent a year yes. with Immortel. We know Immortel. Immortel does some tremendous work with us also at Living Water Community, mm -hmm. where, you know, when we find that there are young, young children with developmental needs, mm -hmm. um, you know, Immortal literally opens their doors for us. Yeah. I mean, they are amazing, you know. So tell me, where are you working now? I mean, you're in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. When did you come back to Trinidad? I came back in April. You came back in April this year? Yes. And they put you into the fire one time? <laughs> no, I went looking for the fire. You went looking. <laughs> you see why God chose young people? 
when Jesus started his whole ministry, he went for the James, the Johns, who were young. John was a little, John, John was much younger than Hannah. John was a teenager and he put them into the fire, mm -hmm. you know, he challenged them and young people are doing tremendous things all around Trinidad and Tobago and in the whole wide world, mm -hmm. you know. And Hannah, I just, just now that you're back, tell me, you know, what's been, what's been it like? What's, what is it like working? It's a little challenging, mm -hmm. but I honestly love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, now that I've gotten the training, yeah. it's a little easier to, und well, when I see certain things taking place within mm -hmm. the classroom and stuff like that, I make the connection a yeah. lot easier yeah. rather than before yeah. when I was, I wasn't too qualified, but I saw things that I wanted to right. help with. So right. now it's a lot easier to right. make the connection and mm -hmm. Address it properly. Mm -hmm. um, I work with Life Center now. Okay. They are mainly based in the West. Mm -hmm. um, they have about five groups All right. with okay. persons with developmental disabilities. And those um, five groups are they in the North, only in the North at this time? Only in the West, yes. Only in the West. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so there are five groups around the West mm -hmm. where, and you call them groups? Yes, they're groups. They're groups, okay. And, and tell me, how, how do these groups function and, and so on? Um, we can say that there are about three to four main teachers within each group. Mm -hmm. um, each group, well, they're mainly targeting persons who have autism. Okay, okay. So there are probably one or two persons that have cerebral palsy or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Rett syndrome, mm -hmm. Down syndrome, mm -hmm. but mainly autism. Okay. Um, and there are probably about five to six, maybe even seven kids within each group. Mm -hmm. Sometimes four, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and these teachers basically help them to become more independent mm -hmm. as well as help them to achieve certain goals. So you mean people's, people, people who have autism, mm -hmm. we, can, we can help them become more independent than they are right now? Yes, we can. I find that amazing because I've, I've seen people with autism and, and I, I, never, I, I would always think that, okay, you know, for the rest of their lives, you're going to have to have people feeding them. You're going to have to have people bathing them. You're mm -hmm. going to have to have people, you know, just doing everything for them. But you're telling me that they can reach a level of interdependent independency. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes, they can. T they share some of the, what, what you've seen and what you've learned and so on. I've actually worked, well, while I was in Canada, mm -hmm. I had to deal, well, not deal, but I had to work alongside someone who yeah. had um, Down syndrome as well yeah. as someone who had autism. Right. While working with each of them, I should talk about one, one, one in particular. Right. She always wanted someone to help her along, mm -hmm. you know, give her that hand-on-hand -hand motion mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that she knows that they're helping them out. And there was one day that I decided, I'm not helping you. Because okay. I can see that you can do this yourself. You right. know what you're doing. Yes. You've been doing this a very long time now. Yes. Now, when they realize that you're not going to help them, that's when outbreaks start. Because uh -huh. <laughs> they're like, no, why are you not helping right. me anymore, right. Right? right? But after a while, they realize, OK, maybe there's something else that I can do on my own. Yes. She did it herself and yeah. then looked around to me to see if, you know, for yeah, confirmation, yeah, yeah. Am, I, am I doing it right? You know, right. Like, I mean, she wouldn't say it, yeah. but she looked across at me like, okay. uh, is this right? Um, yeah. You're giving me the confirmation that this is okay, can I move on? Yeah. So, in other words, as much as you can help them, you can, but once you realize that they're comfortable with what they're doing, right. it's quite possible for them to get that uh, um, comfort yeah. knowing that, yes, I can do this on my own, what's next? Okay. So okay. they always need your confirmation, depending right. on their level of, of functioning. Right. Because there are some of them that are more high functioning than others. Right. But they need that confirmation from someone just to increase their, their level of confidence to know, I can do this on my own, what's okay. next? So you are just crazily bounce my brain all over the place because now I realize that yes, they can progress. You know, once you once you once you affirm them and so mm -hmm. on that okay, yes, you're doing it well mm -hmm. and so on. But this autism, I mean, I you know, it's only been recently that I've been hearing mm -hmm. about people with autism in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. It's only been recently I've been seeing and meeting people who have autism. Mm -hmm. But um, how long has the world been aware of you know people who have this disability? Um, we've been aware of it for about a century now, mm -hmm. but yeah. it hasn't been named 
autism right. until about, let's say, 80, 80 years. About 80, about 80 years. years ago. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, um, let's say about over, over a century ago, mm -hmm. the autism was around, mm -hmm. but we never knew what was the cause of it. We didn't know how to deal with it. Right. About a, over centuries ago, mm -hmm. doctors were the main say. Okay. So they had, they had to say what was going on, right. how to deal with it, right. and whatnot. When they didn't know, yeah. they so basically... they found out they didn't know. Yeah, they, yeah. Knew, they knew they didn't know. But yeah. I mean, parents yeah. and guardians and stuff like mm -hmm. that, they would bank on whatever the doctors would say right. because the doctors had the say-so. Right. If the doctors didn't know, they would just claim it as something else right. and say, okay, the best thing to do with those behaviors is either to put them in an insane oh, no. asylum oh, no. Oh, no. or yeah. to put them in an institution. Right. right. Because the best way they thought they could have dealt with it is what? is medicine meaning to tranquilize them or something <gasps> like that. <laughs> um, but now, yeah. scientists are getting to understand that, yeah. okay, this is autism. Mm -hmm. We're seeing certain patterns. They're mm -hmm. not all the same, right. but it's on a spectrum. Right. So some people may have a certain spectrum of autism, yeah. Yeah. whether it's higher or lower, right. and there are different symptoms that go with that spectrum. Not yeah. all persons are the same, yeah. but they see a certain pattern. Okay. Okay. So now they understand, okay, this is autism. We're not sure how it's developed, right? But we can specify that this is what it is. Because that's my next. That was going to be my next question. My next question is, what causes autism? No one can have a, a, a you concrete mean, answer. You mean as of right now, There's the, no the scientific answer. community, the medical scientific community, doesn't? They, they don't really know what causes autism. Nope. The most the, most people are saying that it can be bacteria around mm -hmm. the womb or. Mm -hmm. um, a strange area so okay, that okay. that's like saying for people who right. they let's say they came from Trinidad and all of right. a sudden they want to go to an extreme cold country right, right. that can cause it but right. they have no concrete answer as okay. to why it's becoming such a norm right now because okay. it's it's increased it's significantly increased. yeah yeah a lot of people are being born with autism right now and okay. they're still not sure why. they're still not sure why. <laughs> now you're a young person yes you're drawn into this field that demands so much from you emotionally, physically, spiritually. How do you remain grounded? How do you, um, you know, still function, you know, and still have this incredible... By the way, this young lady is one of the most positive young ladies that I know. And I mean, to work with people day in, day out. And I mean, it touched you when you went and you did your, your year of internship with Immortel. Mm -hmm. And you said, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then this vocation, because I want to call this a vocation. It's a call, mm -hmm. right? This vocation led you to saying, okay, I want to qualify myself to be able to deal and to help, I like the word, to help mm -hmm. persons with development challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay, then you come back to Trinidad and you get thrown into the field. What keeps you going? What keeps you growing? Honestly, yes. I'll give an experience. Okay. My first experience encountering persons with developmental disabilities was when I had, um, uh, we, well, I volunteered with Princess Elizabeth home to right. take them to a Stern John match. Okay. Stern John had a little committee where, yeah. you know, sometimes he would take some of the kids from... You're talking about Stern John, the Stern footballer? Stern John, the footballer. Stern John, who used to play for Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, indeed. By the way, another young person that's doing tremendous things, do you know that Stern John, in terms of the whole wide world, the whole world of all footballers who've ever represented their country, I think he's like either number one or number two or close to that mm -hmm. in terms of scoring the amount of goals he scored for his national side. Wow. Yes. Stern John from this little country, Trinidad and Tobago. And I've always admired Stern John even when he was playing in the MLS. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's been tremendous. A top goal scorer. Then he went off to England, mm -hmm. you know, and then he did well there. He's played for Trinidad so many times. And he's the top goal scorer for Trinidad, but not only the top goal scorer for Trinidad, but the top person internationally who's represented his country and has scored so many goals. Wow. So yes, a trivia question. <laughs> but getting back to you, Hannah, yes. what did Sir John do? So he had a little committee uh -huh. that basically, well, they helped out persons from primary school as well as they did like a little volunteering. So mm -hmm. they gave 
Princess Elizabeth home an opportunity to take their kids out and go to his football matches when they wow. had some in the country. So, <laughs> Amazing. Uh -huh. so I went to one once mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I volunteered. I said, yeah, well, I'll help out. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Right. But I thought it was just, you know, to give them food and drink. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not, this is my first time really encountering them in such mm -hmm. a way. Mm -hmm. So we picked them up from Princess Elizabeth home. Mm -hmm. And while on the bus, you know, they just told me, well, you know, you, some people need to sit in this area. Some people need to sit in this area just to make sure that, you mm -hmm. know, anything takes place. And I go, OK. And I'm sitting with them and music is playing. And these kids were so full of life. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. We reached the football match. And they, some of them didn't even know who Stern John was. They were right. just so happy that they were yeah out amongst other people you know yeah. and that alone just touched me yeah just knowing that they don't have a care in the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they don't worry about anything the only thing they're really worried about is don't mess up my routine right. i have a routine today yeah. you know what you're supposed to do if yeah. you mess up my routine that's when i'm gonna go crazy right right us we complain about the most outstanding things the yeah. simplest things ever oh my yeah. gosh there's something on my cup or yeah. there's a fly on my food I don't want it anymore yeah. they don't yeah. even care about these things yes. they just want to know that they have their routine that you're taking care of them you know you have to what you have to do they yeah. know what they have to do yeah. sometimes you need to let them know yeah. other than that they have no care in the world and they enjoy life and they enjoy life that's they... what keeps me so full of life when I'm leaving with them yeah yeah wow you know <laughs> Hannah shared with us so much, and she has more to share with us, but I, I just want to, to just kind of reach out. You know, the ARC movement, the ARC movement is something that we started. Um, a bunch of young people and myself, and, and Deacon Kester was part of the whole team too, where we just heard the voice of our Archbishop, our Archbishop saying, do one thing for Christ every day, uh, more than a year ago. And then again, the Pope, Pope Francis says, wouldn't it be wonderful if at the end of every day that you can reflect and say, you know, I've done something good today for someone else, an act of charity. Well, we started the ARC movement, the, the act of random kindness movement. And it's been growing. And what people are doing is sharing, um, you know, acts of kindness that they're doing every single day. Have you ever gone through a whole day and you've not done an act of kindness for someone? Hannah just gave us an amazing thing, just a thought. Why don't we sort of volunteer to go down to the, 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 the children's homes, Princess Elizabeth's home? Why don't we volunteer to some of the orphanages and go and spend some time with these young people who just want a little love? They want a little love. They want, an, you know, attention. I have my, my mentor, my main mentor, is a guy by the name of Lennox Phillip. He used to be my boss at the National Commercial Bank. He was a corporate manager. And, I, and, and even when he left National Commercial Bank and he was one of the um, you know, senior management people at Guardian Life, his Friday afternoons, he would go and spend with a home for, 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 for children who were abandoned. You know? And every single Friday, he would tell I remember him telling me that he would tell his secretary, book my Friday afternoons, right, um, as, you know, I'm out of office mm -hmm. and this is where I spend time. And he would go and spend time with the cradle. The cradle was a, a home that Emmanuel Community ran. Yes. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and that was them. his thing, where he became a foster father for them. And, and, and I knew, and I mean, this man is my mentor. And this is the kind of thing that he did, you know. All, it, all, all his life, I knew him like that, doing things like that. An act of random kindness, you can do something like that. You know, just as Hannah shared with us, she went and she volunteered to go and work with Princess Elizabeth Chiron taking them to a stone John. You see how she's connected to football? You just can't get away, Hannah. Nope. You're into football, yes. you know. And... This is where, you know, she felt that call, as well as when she went to Immortel, energized to do something really positive, to reach out and touch these young people who just need love. They are Jesus in children's clothing, calling for all of us, come love me up. Here is your Christ, 
asking for love. Why not as an act of random kindness? An act of kindness, shouldn't we just sort of, even if it's just once a month, imagine if we can have a hundred people giving one day a month to go visit these children, visit these homes. What a tremendous, you know, impact we'll make on their lives. And it will, Jesus will bless you too, because you're touching Jesus in these children, in these homes. Hannah, you, you know, you mentioned groups, you mentioned Immortel, but share with us the other groups. You said about four groups, mm -hmm. you know, in the West. Where are the other groups? If people wanted to, to find out more, how can they get in touch with, uh, you mentioned the name of the, the, the organization Life that you're working with. Yes. Life Center. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do they get in touch with Life Center? Actually, Life Center, they're <laughs> currently they are mainly based in Pitti Valley. Okay. Um, I believe, I said, I'm not aware of the number currently. Right. But uh, um, but so can they get in touch with you? Yeah, they can. So that you. if somebody wanted in some way, maybe they, maybe they feel that vocation just like you did. Mm -hmm. And they would like to maybe, you know, maybe a young person um, finishing school and they, they have that calling mm -hmm. like you to, listen, I would like to help. Can they contact you? Yeah, they can. I mean, you're sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you like to share with our viewing audience, how can they contact Hannah McSween, who would then maybe share with them what your own life experience was, maybe help other young people to see that, you know, that there is a vocation mm -hmm. to help others with development needs, development challenges. Um, Hannah, you just tell them outside there. Well, you can call me at 310-7107. Um, if by chance you ever need to just have a talk about what you are interested in, in terms of working with persons with developmental disabilities, you can. Um, people with developmental disabilities always need some kind of one-on-one -on -one help. Some people work better in groups, some people work better one-on-one, -on -one. but there are some parents that they prefer that one-on-one -on -one help. They mm -hmm. prefer somebody mm -hmm. to come in their homes and just have a talk with them, okay. understand how it is that we can deal with their child properly, how they can deal with their child mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. um, but let me know. You can give me a call. There's a life center, there's Immortal Children's Center. Immortal, because that's where you went. Yes. Right. There's, there's Princess Elizabeth. There's Princess Elizabeth. Okay. There's New Beginnings. That's a new place that opened in okay. um, Pitti Valley as well. Okay. There's Lady Ho Choi. There are okay. many places that you can just go in. The most, place, most places you can just volunteer. Mm -hmm. Other places, they might just take you in once you're qualified. As once you're qualified. Yeah. Right? Today we've been talking with Hannah McSween, a young footballer first. No, I'm not ready. But someone who helps people with development needs. This is Breakfast with Deacons, where we're focusing on young people doing amazing things in Trinidad and Tobago and the whole world. And this is our way of, of sharing with you what they're doing outside there. Breakfast with Deacons is all about good news. This today was all about good news. We just want to thank you for looking on at us. Please get in touch with us. Tell other people about Breakfast with Deacons. Goodbye. See you later.